This week, the state auditor's office produced a report called Things You Can Do to Prevent Fraud. Initially, our target audience was local governments like small towns or counties, but really all these tips are helpful for small business people too. So I thought I would walk you through my top seven. Number one, occasionally do a hard count of the cash and inventory in your office and compare it to your records. You know, if you look and you see that you have cash or inventory missing and you're doing that check regularly, you may be able to narrow down the time that someone stole some of that cash or stole some of that inventory. For computers, put in spam filters on your email and definitely make sure you have a backup of your hard drive. What I recommend is backing up any kind of data that you have on your computer, keeping it offline and ideally keeping it off site so that if there's a fire or something really catastrophic, you don't lose everything. Number three, make sure no one person has too many responsibilities. So separate the duties of people in your office. For example, you do not want the same employee doing reconciliation of bank accounts and also signing all your checks. You wanna separate those two duties out. Number four, anonymous reporting. Make sure every employee in your office knows that if they see somebody else doing something wrong or committing fraud, they've got a way to go to you, the boss, anonymously, and tell you what they know without anybody else finding out. And one, that helps you receive information about potential fraud, but two, it sends the message to everybody in the office that folks are watching and we're expected to follow the rules here. Number five is kind of an odd thing and it's something that not every small business is gonna be able to do, but require your employees to take vacations. A lot of times fraudsters are really afraid of going on vacation because they think if they leave their desk or their workplace, somebody may come by and see evidence of something they've done that's wrong. So if you make people take vacations, it makes people do the right thing or it makes it easier to catch them if they're doing the wrong thing. Number six, rotate job functions. So really simple example, walk in one Monday and say this week, somebody else is going to open the mail. If usually Steve opens the mail for the office, have Janet open the mail for the week and, and you may be able to prevent some fraud that way, surprisingly. And number seven has to do with your employees. Do background checks before you hire somebody, check references, ask the references if they would be willing to hire, rehire the employee, the potential employee that you're interviewing and train folks on their job duties. That way you know that folks know exactly what they're supposed to do. Finally, the most important thing, the most important person when it comes to preventing fraud is looking at you in the mirror every day. If you send the message to folks that you work with or who work for you that you're willing to bend rules, they're gonna be willing to bend rules. If you're a mayor or small business CEO or a member of the board of supervisors and you follow every rule and you send the message that you want to follow every rule, other folks who work around you and for you, they're going to follow your lead. If you want to see the full document, the full list of all the things you can do, go back and look at some of my previous Twitter posts and Facebook posts that we just posted. We'll have links to the document on our website. You can check out the full thing there.